Autumn is a time of year when red legged earth mites become active and it's at this time of year when we need to be actively monitoring crops and pastures, particularly cereals, canola, lucerne. The red legged earth mite is arguably the most economically damaging pest in the grains industry. Red legged earth mites have been in Australia for over 100 years and we've been successfully managing this pest with chemical and non-chemical control options for many decades. Unfortunately though, we've recently seen this pest evolve insecticide resistance. There is now widespread and growing cases of insecticide resistance to pyrethroids and also localised resistance to organophosphates in South Australia, Western Australia and also very recently in Victoria. So it is very important that we proactively manage red-legged earth mites in a way that minimises that selection pressure for further resistance development. Until now, the mites have been in a period of summer diapause. Unlike many pests, red-legged earth mites are not active year-round. Rather, they are present from autumn to late spring, where they undergo three or four generations. In spring, the mites shift from producing winter eggs to developing diapause eggs instead. And it's these eggs that are well suited to persist over the very hot and dry summer months. As we have recently experienced with autumn and rainfall a decrease in temperatures, these diapause eggs have hatched and given rise to the first generation of the year. Monitoring is key to pest management. It allows us to estimate numbers, which should then be used to determine whether an intervention is required. For red-legged earth mites, the best way to monitor for damage and or mite abundances is to visually inspect paddocks, either early in the morning or on overcast days. In the case of emerging crops, it's best to be monitoring during those first five to six weeks post-emergence, given that that's the most critical time when red-legged earth mites will cause most damage. If chemical control is needed, it's critically important that we do not use the same chemical group across successive mite generations. Research has led to a revision of how we best manage red-legged earth mites. We now have a much better understanding of how widespread insecticide resistance is. We also have a better idea about how resistance evolves in this species, as well as understanding the fitness costs associated with insecticide resistance. Our research has also allowed us to test red-legged earth mites for resistance to other chemicals, such as nanicotinoids. Additionally, we've tested for resistance in other species, such as lucerne flea and briabia mites. The good news is that all of these tests have come up negative. So at the moment, we don't think there is any insecticide resistance to our neonicotinoid seed treatments in red-legged earth mites in Australia. And also, we don't think that there is any resistance in lucerne flea or briobia mites at all. So this is a really good news story. So by continuing to keep up the science, by implementing resistance management strategies, we can hopefully maintain those tests being negative. So it's really important that we start to think about management, not just as we're coming into the season, but ideally the year before. So we know that diapause eggs are produced by red-legged earth mites in spring. And there's a, an approach that's commonly used called time right. Uh, it's a spring spray. And what it does, it reduces the number of mites that produce diapause eggs. And therefore we get a flow on benefit the following autumn with a significant reduction in the number of mites that hatch out during that critical period when our crops are getting out of the ground. As we're coming into the season, we then need to be thinking about what is the risk of our individual paddocks? And it will very much depend on the cropping history of those paddocks. So it can be quite different from paddock to paddock. So if the risk is deemed to be quite low based on the previous red-legged earth mite numbers, the type of crop that we're sowing, then you know, we have some options available to us. We might not want to be putting out an insecticide seed treatment, for example. However, if the risk is medium or the risk is rated high, then of course insecticide seed treatments are very effective, particularly if sowing a very vulnerable crop like canola. What we can also do with this risk assessment is to determine, if practical, whether under high risk situations, we can start to think about uh, strategically rotating our crops. So for example, not sowing a crop like canola, which we know to be very vulnerable to red-legged earth mites, but rather putting in a more tolerant crop such as cereals or pulses. There are many tools and resources available for red-legged earth mites, 
I would recommend a very recent publication developed for the southern region. But this is also applicable to other regions. This is the best management practice guide which contains the red-legged earth mite severity risk assessment tool. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.